and that is about woke universities. Bristol and York St John have warned scholars, I lose the term, use the term loosely, in inclusivity writing guides to try to avoid the term middle-aged. York recommended that its 6,500 6, undergraduates swerve using any age and instead adopt a specific number rather than a category. Apparently you can't use the term OAPs anymore. You say people of pensionable age. And this is the best one in their campaign against what they call harmful attitudes. You can't say, you can't say children anymore. You, oh, hold on. No, you ditch kids kids, and you say children. So don't say the word kids when referring to children. You can't say kids. Is that offensive to goats? I don't know. This all sounds ridiculous. Um, let's talk to um, Philip. Philip, what do you make of this? Hi, Peter. Uh, well, it's really nice to speak to you again. Um, it's, it's ludicrous, obviously. Um, these places are supposed to be bastions of free thinking. So if they're prohibiting language, then it's just wrong on a very, very Free basic. thinking, but not, not for harmful attitudes, Philip, harmful things. I don't know how old it, you are. I'm 40 it, and, and I could be harmed by someone calling me middle age. Indeed, but I don't think it's about us, Peter. I think it's about something else. I think this is a Trojan horse. I think it's an identitarian, identity politics Trojan horse. And we've already seen how we've been breaking down in these places categories of knowledge and identity. So we're not allowed to talk about sex now, are we? We have to talk about 72 genders and God knows how many flags and all of that kind of thing. So we're, take, we're not allowed to talk about men and women. We're not allowed to talk about mum and dad, if you remember a couple of weeks ago. We're not allowed to talk about mum and dad. I forgot that story. I didn't realise that. Why are we not? I, I referenced my mother earlier. Same, She'll we, not be we, happy, we, but why, why not? With, with some of the uh, with with some of the guidelines in, in in some other institutions, Bristol may have been one of them actually. But you were uh, there was don't talk about mum and dad for people who who have different kind of family setup. They will feel excluded. Okay, but I think so. What what we're seeing really is an identity identity kind of politics Trojan horse here because it's not about me and you. It's not about it's not about making people feel included. It's about breaking down these categories, as I say. So this is about people, I think, who identify as age queer and age fluid. This age, is an, sorry, age, what, 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 sorry, I just have to stop you there, Philip. What the hell is age queer? What does that mean? You've not been hanging around universities lately. No, have I you? haven't. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't tend to hang around institutions that have a bunch of 20 year olds there because I'm middle aged. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've been working in universities for the last 25 years, and this is the next big thing. This is the next big kind of identity. We've already had furry identities, remember? Again, it's breaking down categories, stable categories of who we are and, and making artificial and, and sometimes ludicrous categories, OK? And categories that don't really mean anything, like non-binary. Or example. age queer, presumably. <laughs> age queer so there are obviously massive problems with this if i'm a 53 year old man and i decide that i identify as a 15 year old girl yes which means i think that i should have access to for example places in which 15 year oh my god right get okay changed. yes yes right. this is the next identity and we have to be inclusive you no, know we, we don't no we don't no we, no, don't. we don't <laughs> no, we don't. So, if, but, but this in is, theory, this is, the this is the attitude in universe. Sorry, I, I'm just, I'm just. This is just. We're just through the looking glass here. So, someone can say I identify, even though I'm clearly a four. I mean, factually, I'm a forty-year-old man. In fairness, I, in, in, in theory, I could say I'm age queer and I identify as a fifteen-year-old. Um, I don't know, non-binary person. So I can, I can just then, presumably, the next logical step is that I can just walk into a, a children's changing room. Is that, is that, is that what, 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 what some people will argue? I mean, this is mad. I think this is where we're going. But Peter, if, if you, if we would go back in a HG Wellsian time machine only 10 years ago or, or 15 years ago, let's say, the idea that that men could be in female changing rooms identifying as women, the, yeah. the, the idea that, that male rapists could be in female prisons yeah, would be absolutely abhorrent to it. Yeah, but, we, we, but we, would think, we, would think we would think it's mad. We would think it's completely mad. And do you know what? It is mad, but it's happening. It's happening, um, and it's speeding up. It's only going to get worse because 
This is all ideological. Like I say, it's clothed in this idea of caring for people and, and not wanting people to be offended, but it really isn't. It's about, it's about changing the language. It's about prohibiting certain kinds of categories and identities that are stable and that crucially are about us being safe. It's about safeguarding. It comes back to this same thing, which I talk about time and time again, but it's so important. It's about um, affirmation versus safeguarding. And safeguarding always loses out mm. when progressive politics is okay. involved. Can I, I've just thought of a new category I might like to invent. Can I, can I invent weight queer? Can I be weight queer? Um, so I can, if you do, can I, can I join you on that one? Yes, I, I want to identify as a 12 and a half stone male model with a six pack. Can I, can I do that? And nobody can say I'm not that because they would be discriminating against me. They would be horrible bigots, Peter. They would be horrible bigots. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Okay, I'm going to, I, I now, I now from this point on, invent weight queer and I identify as someone who's 12 and a half stone. Uh, so that, that's, that, that's what's happening. And if you, if you don't say that I'm 12 and a half stone and have a six pack and look like a male model, you are denying me my truth, Philip. It's, it, it seems absurd, but, but for me, the, the really worrying thing is that, that we joke about this. This is, this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Because what, what's happening is we are rejecting reality and we are living in fantasy worlds. We are constructing fantasy worlds about ourselves. But the terrible thing is... That used to be either a mad thing or a teenage thing or a childish thing, and we would grow out of it. The terrible thing now is that the institutions, yeah. the government, the yeah. media, they are all encouraging us to do that. Because they're, so they're afraid of offending it's anybody fine. or telling the truth. Uh, Philip, thank you. Philip Kisley, he is a senior fellow at the New Culture Forum, and speaks on a heck of a lot of sense. Um, so thank you to him for that.